what advice would you give someone trying to get their first role in cybersecurity? It really is an industry that takes a lot out of you. And it has really elevated my career significantly to be able to do wow. that. Work experience is not the only experience you can have. The first one definitely is networking. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Tech Certified Podcast. I'm your host, Caleb Only Certified, and this is the podcast where we interview tech creators and tech professionals who inspire us on our journeys in the tech industry. Today, we have a special guest. Our guest today is a senior cloud security architect with a strong background in cyber security. She shares her insights on platforms like Instagram and YouTube, where she goes by the name Cyber Queen. She is a Microsoft MVP. She's your cybersecurity bestie. And she really needs no introduction, but I've done it anyway. <laughs> Vanessa, how are you doing today? Hi, Caleb. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Amazing, amazing. Um, it's so great to have you. And let's get straight into it. And the first question I just want to ask you is just to give an introduction and tell us a little bit about yourself for the very few people who don't know already. Wow. I, I feel like you gave like a really good intro. <laughs> I, I mean, I have very little really to add to the intro that you gave me. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. But um, to, to, to everyone out there, hey everyone, I'm Venetia. I am a cloud security architect. I am a through and through cybersecurity professional is what I, what I think of myself. Um, I've worked in the industry for over 10 years now in the cybersecurity industry. And I was really like, um, one of those people who grew up in the industry, I would say. And yeah, I've been through multiple roles in the security industry and now find myself in the cloud security space, which I am really really enjoying at the moment and beyond that i am a cybersecurity content creator and also like to double into um, different programs like the mvp program that i'm part of now at the moment yeah. amazing amazing that's a great introduction and let's start with like your tech career um so if you could give like a brief walkthrough of your journey and how you are now you know a senior cloud security architect um so so what's the what's the steps leading up to that um what sort of roles did you work in before and just a brief walkthrough of your journey in tech and cybersecurity. yeah i mean uh yeah so for me the the journey is quite long to be honest mm. uh, my tech journey started as a kid like i was always interested in technology as a kid and i mean even kind of the hardware components of technology those things really intrigued me uh, i remember annoying my parents greatly because i would kind of um, open up anything that had like a hardware functioning chip in to see what that's all about and how things work together and why, for example, a fan is able to operate and make wind because I opened it up and checked like kind of the motherboard of the fan and how things are pieced together. So just to give you a view, that really started. So for me, I was quite young when I knew definitely like right out of school that I would be going into a tech kind of space. At the time, I thought more kind of PC building and hardware technology, like that was really what I was finding myself interested in. But right after school, I went and I uh, decided to, to take up a degree program. For me, I did a degree program, but in in like a non-traditional institution where I was kind of doing distance learning as part of this program and I could learn at my own pace. So while I was doing this program, I was also on the side of that kind of building computers and building networks and just trying to see how, like figure out how things work. So as part of that, I then actually completed that program in kind of a way shorter time. So it was like a three and a half to four year program, but I completed it in just over a year. And then after that, I I just like I was looking 
for my first job in tech, really, which proved to be really difficult, even for someone who had kind of maybe the sys admin and remote support skills. Even at that stage, it was quite difficult for me to get a job in the industry. And I was willing to um, settle for even like a receptionist job at a tech company <laughs> so that I could like work <laughs> my way up <laughs> into like a technical role. Yeah, that didn't go well for me because I was too honest. In the interview process, I just said, no, I'm just planning to land here and then grow. And they're like, no, no, we went somewhere long, long term. But I mean, um, to, to, to speed up the journey a little bit from there, I actually then went into a field, uh, support role where I would drive to people's small businesses and I would then go and fix their computers or their networks and my, uh, real niche or the thing that I was really, really interested in was networking. Like I loved to build networks, to set up routers and switches and then connect things together. I really loved yeah. that. So, uh, my, that was, I was so passionate about that. And then eventually I would say six months later, I, I actually found myself getting a really nice opportunity into security at the time, network security, because uh, when I went for an interview as a network administration administrator, the role was actually changed into a firewall administrator. So it was a brand new role at this company. They had just said, we're no longer looking for a network admin. We're looking for a firewall admin. And I was like, yeah, I'll still do that. Um, so that's yeah. really how I found my first foot in, into the door into security. And I mean, that was very, very early on in my journey. And from there, it was network security. Then it was kind of network project, uh, installations. So I would go and install like multiple firewalls for like big organizations and like build up their networks together and all of that. And from there, it went into kind of, uh, architecture, so security architecture, but um, a real pivotal moment for me came like a few years later, maybe five years or so down the line when I went into one of the biggest banks that we had in uh, headquartered in South Africa, but in Africa. And uh, yeah. there I went into the, the threat intelligence and security operations space. So that was a real pivotal move for my career because I mean banks really have security stories to tell and like yeah. the experience gained in a bank that was just phenomenal for me after that I moved a little bit into the secure into the insurance industry into more of the security operations leadership side of things where I got exposed to cloud computing because now um, it was a smaller organization and I had to do a lot a lot more security uh, technology management. So then right. cloud was one of the things, the red team was one of the things like security operations were one of the things. So uh, from that perspective, it was like, uh, so that was kind of where I dabbled first into cloud. Uh, after that, I got approached by Microsoft for a job. So uh, then I spent a bit of time at Microsoft and then finally moved halfway across the world to Denmark to um, come and work in the role where I am now as uh, the cloud security architect at my existing organization. Yeah. Wow. That's an amazing journey. And there's a few things I kind of picked up on. So the beginning was really difficult and there were a lot of rejections, but despite that, you see where you are now and how your career has progressed. And also, you worked in a lot of different roles, which is really interesting. And you can see the value of working in loads of different areas and building up the technology and networking and cloud and threat intelligence and all the other areas, which is really, really cool. So today's video has been kindly sponsored by Cloudways. Cloudways provides fast and reliable cloud hosting solutions for digital agencies, e-commerce stores and online businesses. As a managed cloud provider, Cloudways provides the flexibility to manage your applications or websites on top cloud infrastructures like AWS, DigitalOcean, and even Google Cloud. Cloudways provides world-class hosting solutions for WordPress, Magento, 
Laravel, and PHP application. The platform ensures fast and reliable performance, high availability to host high traffic sites. Plus, with Cloudways Autonomous, enjoy fully managed hosting that auto scales to meet the needs of your growing business. Cloudways provides a variety of options. Simply click the link in the description below to try it out for completely free. Big thank you to Cloudways for sponsoring this video. The, the next question I kind of wanted to ask you was just about cybersecurity and and why cyber? And I guess like, because you're a cyber queen and everyone knows you're a cyber queen now. <laughs> and why that focus on cybersecurity and where did that kind of interest uh, come from? Yeah, I mean, I think firstly, it's the challenge. Cybersecurity is like, it's this world of continuous unknowns. So, I mean, anyone that works in this space knows that like there's always something new and it's it's always like somewhat of a challenge to to kind of figure out how to solve a particular problem or like you're fighting uh enemies that you don't know and you 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 literally don't know what their next move is going to be so there's kind of the challenging aspect in that and for me as a, an individual i really thrive on being challenged and uh and really like being pushed out of a space of knowing things to a space of figuring things out. So that really resonated with me well. But then it's also the fast pace of the industry. So there is always something new. And even I remember when I was, uh, when I first joined Microsoft, I thought, oh, wow, like, this is it. This is it. Like, I'm on the edge of this now. Like, I am in cloud. This is the furthest ahead, like, in technology that you can be. You know, the cloud is it. Like, and now, a few years down the line, I'm like, whew, okay, lots of people are using cloud, and it's still it. But, I mean, now there's AI. Now there's all these other advancements that we have to think about. And then we have to, like, constantly think, how are we going to evolve? How are we going to mature? So it's that constant challenge that really, really keeps me intrigued about cybersecurity. But then it's also, like, it's so rewarding, right? Because you're really doing something and you can see the payoff in the end. Because when you're working in this job, it's like, when you need to secure something, you know that there's a purpose for why you are securing this, because if it's exposed, it's, it's like detrimental situations. So yeah. it's really like keeping that purpose of you doing this and there's reason and there's purpose behind it. And that really keeps me motivated here. Yeah, that's really interesting. You know, another question I kind of wanted to ask you was throughout this journey of working in cyber, um, what is the biggest pro of working in this industry and what is the biggest con? I guess you've kind of answered one of the pros, but what would you say is the biggest pro and biggest con of working in this industry? Yeah, so I think the 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 biggest pro is probably opportunity. If If you're a person like wanting opportunity and willing to take up challenges and opportunities, then they really there really is massive opportunities in this space and mm. massive uh, opportunity for progress in your career or to start your own business or to, you know, to really fulfill like goals that you have as an individual. So that I would say is one of the biggest pros. One of the biggest cons I would say is that it really is an industry that takes a lot out of you as a person. Like this really is one of those things that in in my view cannot only be a job, otherwise burnout will get you all the time. Like it has to be a passion. Like you really have to enjoy doing this work because it is really constant and continuous. And as soon as you think you're on top of it, you're really not. And that really mm. can be a challenge, uh, a mental battle, like a physical battle. Like it's always, there's always a thing. So I, I would say that's one of the biggest, the hardest challenges. If 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 you look at it as only a job, if you're passionate about it, it's still a challenge, but at least you're passionate about it, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. I think it's great that you, you mentioned um, a con like that. I think loads of people want to get in without thinking of, you know, 
how difficult it is or maybe they can look at the perks of being in this industry like i heard people in cybersecurity make five hundred thousand or whatever amount and i want to be that but do you really want to be that <laughs> and it's it's important to look at the realities as well you know yeah absolutely so important yeah and um i guess another question i kind of wanted to ask was about uh so I know you're a massive advocate for women in cybersecurity and, you know, working in cybersecurity and in tech in general for, I've been working in this industry for about two years and it is obviously like a massively male dominated um, industry. And I don't know if that's slowly starting to change maybe, but yeah, I just wanted to, to, to hear more about what motivates you to advocate for, you know, more representation in this industry. Um, and and uh, the way you've been going about that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good question and a, a topic very very close to my heart. So for me, I think the there's a couple of things that motivates me to to do this and to speak up and to kind of advocate for more women and more diversity as a whole in this industry. Is firstly, when I started in this industry, there was no one that could tell me what it was like. There was no one that I could look at and be like, oh, like there is a lady that's like phenomenal in this. Like she's also like a techie. I want to be a techie and that's great. I'm, I'm looking up to her. So there was no role model for me personally to look up to that was someone that was like me. And for me now looking back on my journey, that's one of the biggest gaps that I think that I found along my path is that maybe I endured a little more than what I should have been enduring at the time in the workplace. Because even back then when I started, I mean, you can imagine it was, it was even worse. Like I remember being like rocking up to a, a customer environment, like with a firewall in my hand, ready to install this firewall. And the IT manager would ask me, okay, but where's the engineer? You know, wow. and I'm like, I I'm it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like this is the engineer. So, so those kind of things, I feel like there was no one really there that could be like, you know, this is how you work through these situations or look at that person. There are others that's doing it and maybe they were there, but I, they were not visible to me. And so I firmly believe that you, by raising awareness and by telling my story, my experience, sharing my knowledge, like other people and other females can see, wow, like she's in this industry, like she's quite technical, like she's doing it, like, you know, how do we do it? And then also for the females who are entering the industry, one thing that I have found also is that when I'm speaking with people or mentoring them, they find it really difficult to find a sense of belonging in the industry. Like some think that they have to be less feminine in the workplace, for example, in order to fit in. Otherwise, they stand out too much. And now you're already a female in this like kind of male team and now like you standing out and so for me it has taken me years to show up with my pink presentation because I like pink you know so it has really taken me years to show up like that and feel professional because you know what it's my knowledge that matters firstly it's my diverse perspective and opinion that matters and that's what people want to listen to in the end of the day like if you are the subject matter expert like you know your topic you are there to share your knowledge people are going to want to listen to you no matter like what your presentation looks like what you look like um who you are and i just feel like by creating awareness about that and by advocating for um, more diversity and more change in the industry like other women can see me and maybe they feel more comfortable maybe they can look up and see she is there so I can do it as well definitely and that's amazing because honestly like as a young black man I can say you rep you being uh, a representative that people can look to and say oh Venetia is doing it so 
and she looks like me, so I can do it. And there's definitely an aspect of that for me. I don't think I would have gotten into this industry if I didn't have some sort of role models. I speak in my videos about a mentor that I had, and obviously he was not really that much older than me. He was like, I was probably like 21 at the time, and he was 28. And because he looked like me, you know, he was a young black man. I felt like, wow, okay, someone that looks like me is doing this, so I could do it. Same with, um, I I watch uh, a lot of, I watch a lot of, um, I still do watch a lot of uh, day uh, cyberworks videos. Um, he's a YouTuber as well, and so I watch his videos. I'm like, wow, I can actually share my learnings on YouTube and do stuff like that because I see someone that looks like me doing it. And so it's so commendable that um, you, Vinicia, have been able to create that community and awareness of, you know, yeah, you can be this, you can get into cybersecurity, you can be technical um, as a woman. Um, so that's that's really amazing and, and commendable. Thank um, you. Yeah, of course. And, and moving on, I wanted to ask you about, you know, getting into cybersecurity. And I know that on your channels and and platforms you know you give a lot of great advice on how someone would get into this industry it's not easy um and loads of people struggle to break into cybersecurity and so i wanted to ask you whilst we have you what advice would you give someone trying to get their first role in cybersecurity yeah so for me, I think it, it the advice starts a little bit philosophical first, and then it starts with actionable items. So my philosophy is that if you want to, in today's world, break into cybersecurity, firstly, you really have to know your reason and your purpose. So like knowing your why is so important because that's what's going to keep you grounded throughout the struggles. So throughout the information overload and not finding kind of the area that you want to focus into, or maybe you have the area that you want to focus into, but you really don't know how to like hone in on the skills that you need or the experience that you need for that area. Like knowing your reason and your purpose for wanting to pursue the journey. For me, I have always found that that's what keeps you grounded and motivated to keep going. So that should be the first thing to really, really like solidify your purpose for going there so that you don't stray away from the journey, like as you are like 30 or 40% on the way there and finding it more and more difficult. The second thing then is that a lot of people are focusing on the credentials and the the, by the credentials, I mean like um, the educational components, the certification components, and that's great, right? I have, I, I did go the educational route at first, and I did get a lot of certifications that did help my career a lot. However, the barrier to entry for cybersecurity professionals today is really like it is a lot harder than what it was maybe even three, four years ago. And so now when someone is trying to get into the industry, you really need to have skills and knowledge. Like that is so important. So the one thing I say is in parallel to doing the educational aspects, for example, if you're pursuing a cloud engineering or cloud security analyst journey, then cloud certifications are great. They're going to help, but Cloud security skills is what's going to demonstrate the knowledge for you to be able to actually get the job. And that's what's going to really be the factor that sets like you apart from the other kind of pool of candidates that's flooding for the entry level roles. Because remember, the entry level roles, like there could be hundreds of people applying for that same entry level role. So the thought process always has to be what's going to make me the unique candidate? when I'm applying amongst hundreds of other people that's applying for the entry level role. And then I would say, finally, alternatively, instead of applying for the entry level role, maybe gain more skill, do more projects and apply for the intermediate level role, right? Because that is kind of a hack that people are not talking about that often, but work experience is not the only experience you can have. Um, yeah. 
Wow, that's a good one, and not one I've not heard before. Going for that intermediate level role, and I feel like, yeah, people definitely have that、um, sort of fear that they can't hack it in those roles. They wouldn't be able to even go for them. But yeah, definitely like roles with that ask for like a year or two's experience. You might still be able to to get that role, and they probably give you that chance if you know that, despite not having the work experience, you do have that technical experience through projects and labs and other things, which is some really great advice. Another thing I wanted to ask you、uh, was about some of the most important skills to learn to get into cybersecurity. And cybersecurity is so broad, so there's a massive variety of skills, but What would be some of the most important skills generally for your area of, of technology? Yeah, so I think the first one, the first one definitely is networking, and I I think whether you want to pursue a technical or non-technical area of cybersecurity, that just determines the level of like networking knowledge you have to pursue. But at a core baseline. Everyone needs to know how things work, like how systems are interconnected and how things work, because that's ultimately what we're trying to secure. Like all of the digital platforms, all of these communication channels, etc. That's what what like the entire thing centers around, right? So, one of the core skills is definitely networking.、Uh, another core skill is how. How systems work and how systems function, and by systems I mean like this can be your endpoint computers, whether it is a Windows, a Linux machine, but what users use in the workplace because those are、uh, targets of、uh, crime, cyber crime, and then it it can also be. The server level. So, if you're going into kind of a security analyst or operations side, then the server level and understanding kind of.、Um, but I group them all as operating systems because whether it's a server OS or a, a desktop OS, it's the same. But also the mobile device landscape, right? So not everyone. I mean, most people are working from their iPads, their phones, all of that as well. So just understanding the Basics, technically, of how these assets work will really help you to understand how things function and what can be exploited. Because the ultimate goal is that you need to be able to understand different attack vectors. So, if you know networking, you understand the network attack vector. If you know、um, endpoint or systems, you understand the system-based exploitability and attack vector, and then. In if we specifically look at cloud, I think one of the most critical things is understanding the identity landscape. That is、mm-hmm. so so important because as key as networking is today, it, like in the world of cloud,、um, software as a service, the identity is so so critical to that. So understanding how to protect and secure the people's identities、um, that's really important. So I would say, I mean, like you said, it's it's. I find it such a like an intriguing question to answer because if I think of kind of a first job for an analyst into the industry, I would say the basics that you have to have down is kind of understanding the asset, the network, the identity, and the application, and then.、Right. Yeah, and then understand the threat factors that that uh, can that uh, are relevant to each of those, and then from there you can learn the other skills. So you can learn how to work on the technologies. You can learn、um, some coding, maybe some scripting like Python, Bash,、um, PowerShell for analyst roles. But I mean, that's further to understanding those basics first. That's a really good answer, and. Those things will surely help a lot of people in the audience who are looking to get into this industry. Wait, stop! There is no way you've listened to this podcast all this way and have not subscribed to the channel. Some of you have not even liked the video. 
If you've taken any value from this podcast, please subscribe to the channel, Caleb Only Certified, and leave a like on this video so it can get out to as many people as possible. And you never know, leaving a like might actually give you some good luck. Okay, that's enough. Let's get back to the podcast. Those tips are really, really valuable coming from someone who's been in the industry um, for, for some time now. Um, thank you so much, Vinicia. And, and uh, another question I wanted to ask you was to share one interesting story, an interesting career story. And it could be interesting good or it could be interesting terrible. But one interesting story that you can think of um, that you'd want to share to the audience. Yeah, I mean, whew, I have like I have a few interesting stories, but I think <laughs> one one thing I would say is like to people uh, maybe aspiring to be like like core analysts or trade intelligence pr- professionals, like banking is your best friend. When I was in the banking industry as a security professional, I learned so much and was so traumatized by all the different like kind of attacks that you see in a bank it's hectic but my one key story comes from when i was actually uh, like my core focus was threat intelligence and we had at the time we had a really big incident in uh in the bank and we had it was a real like movie like hack right like the one of our sister companies they had been compromised and we had gotten like this notice like that you really have to sit down for and reading that notice it's like okay fine i want csi cyber now um you know and it was really that hectic but i mean um ultimately that's where some of my biggest uh, learnings came from and it was it was basically uh, we were being held at ransom for a compromise that happened in the sister company and the data was going to be published etc but my job which was actually such a small job at in that incident was one of the biggest jobs but it was to make sure that I am monitoring the right keywords on all of the platforms that these um, cyber criminals would usually paste it. So if you think ghost bin, paste bin, anyway. So we had these uh, threat intelligence tools and I had to put in any keywords that I deem relevant to the data that they might have stolen to get the heads up for the bank if they were planning on publishing the data, right? And the so the incident went on and it was like days and we hadn't been sleeping and uh, they had brought us food and it was like in this whole like kind of war room and finally the ceo of the company he went out to the media and he had acknowledged the breach and when he did that the cyber criminals actually had published the data but my keywords were so good. We found it and had taken down the data within five minutes of the publishing of it. And it was, it was hectic. It was like when he went onto the media, I was like refreshing and refreshing and, and like looking at multiple screens for anything that pops up. And the moment that something popped up, it was almost like first I blacked out and then I was like, something popped up and then it was um it actually saved the day so wow that yeah so that really that was one of my top highlights for you can have one single small job that you are sitting there thinking oh everyone's running around everyone's deploying stuff like i'm just sitting here but i mean that was a massive thing and had i not done kind of the correct keywords in the five minutes that I was working on the thing, we would not have picked this up like five minutes after they had published it. Yeah. Wow. That's an incredible story. I can only imagine what it would be like in, in that room when no one's, no one's sleeping, <laughs> but that's a really good story. Thanks so much for sharing that. Yeah. I have like a, not really similar, but kind of similar story where I think I was very early in my career and funny enough it was my cloud career like my first cloud job and I was like literally two weeks in but it was a it was a job where it's I was working as an Azure administrator so a cloud administrator but they kind of 
move people around. So you'll be on projects that have nothing to do with Azure sometimes. So I was kind of thrown into this project where a company had been hacked and they'd they'd um they they'd taken over their network literally and this is two weeks in so I was so confused as to I'd never I'd never been in this kind of environment. People were panicking and they couldn't use their laptops at all because anything they do would be could be um yeah, could their data could be seen or anything like that. We had to refresh the whole network um, and rebuild the network from scratch. Um, we had to go into de contaminated devices and try and draw out as much data as we could. Uh, and yeah, it was really my first experience. I was so shocked by that that I was just like, is this what it's like to work in cyber? I don't know <laughs> if I want to do this. <laughs> But honestly, those kind of experiences are so, so key to, to your career. And it's an amazing story to tell as well. So thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Um, and if anyone... That's deep. <laughs> that's that's yeah. like... <laughs> yeah. And it's the fact that it was so early on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's a cool story to tell. And, and yeah. what happened in the end, you know, we, we re rebuilt the network and they started working again fine. They they never got back the data and they never paid any ransom. I can't remember exactly what happened, but there were loads of insurance fees from that company and all sorts. Um, but yeah, crazy story. <laughs> but <laughs> moving on. So I wanted to ask you what inspires you to share your content online and how have you found your content creation journey? Yeah. So what inspires me is creating the visibility firstly i mean um i think putting yourself out there is like really daunting to be honest and and also i i feel like prior to the whole cyber queen thing i was pretty much in the background i am very introverted right like i'm definitely not the talkative one i'm definitely introverted and then i decided to kind of go about this journey and it was like complete polar opposite of me. It's kind of like, now you have to talk. Um, so wow. that has been pushing myself out of my comfort zone really to do that. So, uh, but for visibility, because I just, I remember I went to an event, like it was a female event, but like uh, ladies in business. And I went to this event and no one there was like even a tech person or in cybersecurity. And I remember all these ladies, they were so fascinated by me being in cybersecurity. And they were like, well, what do you do? And after that event, I was like, okay, so I mean, I have to talk to people about this because it doesn't seem like it's common knowledge that, you know, that we do this. So that really like right off the bat sparked for me to kind of want to start the platform. And I didn't, I didn't plan it to be cyber queen or like it wasn't well thought through at all. It was just like, I'm going to Instagram and I'm going to talk a little bit about security stuff and that's it. So the fact that it grew and like it became this platform and I am now on YouTube and it just, that just kind of, it just morphed and morphed into right. that space that it really started with the intent of, I'm just going to talk about cybersecurity and my journey and kind of create visibility. But how I found it, I think people underestimate the amount of work, but I mean, you would know. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of work that goes into content creation and into kind of putting yourself out there. But I think there's a lot that comes back to you about the journey. So for me personally, it is once I started sharing my knowledge, I learned a lot more. Um, it's like I found that people start to, ask me questions and look to me for information and now you know I have to learn more and I have to explain things better and I have to make it more plain and simple so one thing content creation has helped me elevate my career in terms of communication and in terms of stakeholder communication even to my stakeholders because where before I would communicate kind of technical topics and concepts in a way that I understood them like my platform now has taught me that there's a whole world out there who 
doesn't understand what you're saying. So, you know, you got to explain it very differently. And it has really elevated my career significantly to be able to do wow. that. So there's definitely a benefit in that. But also, I think the journey is rewarding. I think there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes. But for personal branding, for kind of creating a visibility and a platform for other people to come to you and, you know, to trust your information and your knowledge. And that has been super rewarding for me, honestly. Amazing. And I can yeah. say the same. It's, it's really rewarding and also takes a lot of time and effort as well. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very glad that I started my journey. I think my, mine started uh, a little bit differently. It was just like, I think I, I, I've watched, um, I've been watching Day Sabo, as I said, and, um, I was like, if I pass the certification, I want to, I want to talk about it to help others to do the same. And from there I posted one and people were actually watching. I was like, whoa, people are actually watching this. That's crazy. And from there I started posting more regularly and it, and it picked up from there. Um, yeah. But I mean, I must say, yeah. I really like, I found your YouTube channel long ago, I think. And then we connected on Instagram and I, I thought that uh like your certification videos and your content like it's so original it's so it almost feels like i get to know you through your videos which is amazing you know so really wow. that really is it really is great oh, i really appreciate that no thanks so much and yeah like there's so much more to come <laughs> me my, my career i still feel like it's just started um and i don't know where it's gonna go from here and I know for you as well, Vinicia, there's there's so much there's so much more and there's so much more content that's gonna be going out there. And that leads us well into our next question. Any things that you wanna um plug, share and promote with the audience, um to let us know now. Yeah, I think um for those who are not maybe subscribed to my YouTube channel. That would be a great thing to do to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cyber Queen. I have um, like a really big initiative that is actually coming, like has come down the line by now, probably. But it is my community platform, um, which is on the school platform. I don't know if you know about it, but it's the, the school platform. It's like a platform where communities can engage and connect. So I've created a cybersecurity based this community in there. So people can join that community if they're inter interested in learning and kind of getting kind of that close connection off of social media. But that's about it otherwise youtube instagram ask me questions i'm i'm always ready to answer it amazing and for everyone watching the links will be in the description of this video so check those out and thanks so much Vinicia, again for joining me on this podcast episode and thanks to the audience thanks to everyone for watching in the comment section let us know what creators or professionals you'd like to see on this podcast and I'll do my best to make it happen. Thanks again, Vinicia. And thanks Thank everyone. Thank you for, for having watching. me, Caleb. Cheers. Bye.